I'm a mathematician and a physicist here, a double major, and I also just won the most prestigious award in the country to pursue research at any institution I want, That's the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. So I think I'm pretty you know, qualified to say that most of what you're saying is based on like old data. Um, but my question to you, and so I want you all to like, realize last that. Month, but sure. um, like, for example, gender identity disorder, that's the DSM-4, bro. We use the DSM-5 now for psychologists to be able to talk about... I literally about cited the DSM-5 in the speech, and it's called gender dysphoria, which is I the term that I use throughout the speech, not gender identity disorder. You sound like disorder, a bozo, bro. And you, can no, and you can't even make your wife wet, bro, so what's good? <laughs> so, number one, uh, let me just say, the nice thing about... Having the real several question, small children, the real question I don't feel is, the necessity if, to have my masculine. If we're using a Western like colonial you. idea of gender, then why should it apply? If we're using because because the gender binary is a Western colonial is a Western colonialist framework of gender. You're you right. Know? Men and women don't exist in any other culture. No, 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 no. I'm no. You're think right. about Native American. Nailed it. Third gender people. I'm not saying that third gender people exist in Native American societies, Western African societies, like Southern Native American societies, like Mexico. So in other places that are not white dominated, and they like are the United incorrect. States or Europe. And so, so you're saying, saying white, so non-white people, I'm a mathematician and a physicist. You cannot so tell me. The, so I have a question. And also you're not a biologist. So I have a question. I'm 20. As a mathematician and a physicist, what in the hell do you know about human biology? And you got your law degree from Harvard. What do you know about biology? That, video, that whole video, by the way, is a reminder to me of why so much of what passes for debate in the modern era, it just it's the worst and it doesn't make our country any better. It is done as a branding thing. That is why he's doing this tour. For one, because he's being paid large amounts of money to bamboozle and delude young people into being supportive of low corporate tax rates, low individual tax rates on the wealthy, and for them to be obsessed with things that they know nothing about and are interested in learning about. That's what his job is, that's what he's paid for, and this is one tool of that. And while, yes, the student that's on the screen right now did make good points, that is irrelevant in this format. It doesn't do anything. None of those generally adults that are sitting on the floor cheering for everything Ben Shapiro says care at all. They don't actually care about gender. And it, while they are ignorant about it, they're not interested in learning. He just said those cultures are wrong biologically. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not talking about biology, we're talking about the social construct of gender. But Ben Shapiro doesn't know that, and they don't see any inconsistency in him saying, you're a mathematician, what do you know about gender? He's not a biologist and he's talking about biology. Again, it's all cheap point scoring and the entire thing is biased. You can say anything you want and your side will like it and the same for the other. Some of the ideas that are popular in your side of politics, uh, would seem to take us back to the dark ages, Georgia, new abortion laws, uh, which you are much in favor of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A Georgian woman who travels to another state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay, a couple of things. One, I'm not sure, I mean, frankly, I don't know whether you're, are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a Just journalist right that asks questions. Okay, so you're, in a, you're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I, only one side of the political aisle no. has ideas. So I just want to point Look, out that, no, I, know that I wish, you're, you, would, I wish I, you would at least be honest in your own biases. Mr. So Shapiro, are, are, are I know you, are you a member of the in America is now so polarized that on one program you only have the left and another one you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put an alternative to them. If you were an anti-abortion person, I would be putting pro-abortion questions to you. But you are really, an anti-abortion person. Really, would you call the pro-choice position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer my question? Sir, sir, I'm happy to answer your question. Go Please you answer this one. Would you, suggest, would you suggest that a late-term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking is a view on this issue. I'm asking you the questions. Sir, you just suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible. So I'm asking you as an objective journalist, would you ask the same question to a pro-choice advocate by what, calling what their I'm, position brutal and horrible? What I'm asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortions after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks is not a return to the dark ages? What's your answer? My answer is something called science. I read an op-ed in the Washington Examiner, which is a right-wing outlet. 
And uh, the title of the op-ed was in defense of this interview, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the point of view was, look, the interview style from some of the hosts from BBC is very different from what we, you would expect from American news anchors because their whole point is to stay calm and kind of get under your skin. Mm -hmm. And it appears that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and what he was asking was, I think, okay to ask because again, you're having someone, like your job as a journalist or as a news host isn't to just simply ask simple questions and play patty cakes with the person you're having the interview with. It's to ask the hard questions. And so if you juxtapose the way he interviewed Ben Shapiro to the way that he's interviewed others from the left, you would see very similar treatment, which is why this this host, what was his name again? Andrew Neal. Yeah, Andrew Neal. He's not coming from a, a liberal perspective. In fact, if you look at his personal politics, he is not liberal at all. He's just coming at it from the contrarian perspective, which I think makes the interview way more interesting.